What's up guys and welcome back to Craft Computing. A couple of months ago at QuakeCon 2018, I had the opportunity to take place in a staff versus staff case modding competition with the guys over at moddersinc.com. Now, my case is inside this box and if I'm being honest with you guys, I haven't seen it since I got back. So I'm really anxious to open this box, make sure it's all okay and uh, get it all put back together. So what do you say we do that now?
Now that that's finally done, uh, let's get to the important part. There we go. All right, now we can get the show on the road. So this is the final result of my Dishonored case mod. Now, what this was was a competition between myself and the rest of the staff over at Modders Inc. to come up with a case mod that was either Bethesda or id themed for QuakeCon and cost less than $250 to execute, not including the parts of the build. Uh, the, the majority of the parts in this build were sponsored by, uh, by their respective companies, but doing the case mod itself, we had a budget of $250. Boy, so where do I begin on this? Uh, I think let's start off with uh, thanking the sponsors for this who actually made this possible. Uh, Fractal Design, obviously with the Define R6, great case, tempered glass edition. This started as a black case. We'll get into uh, the, the color tone on this in a little bit. Uh, EVGA stepped up with a Z374 The Wind motherboard, the 1070 Ti SC edition, as well as a 750 watt G3 power supply, custom sleeved cables and cable combs to make this all just pop. Kingston threw in a 480GB M.2 SSD, as well as 16GB of 2400MHz value RAM. And then SwiftTech stepped up with the majority of the water cooling parts you see here. I've got the Apogee SKF for the 8700K in this build. Uh, they're obviously the, the 1070 Ti full cover water block, which is fantastic. Uh, a Maelstrom uh, D5 pump, which has been working great and looks amazing. And I, I wanted to integrate it into the look, but I couldn't find anywhere to put it. So it's just kind of tucked down in the basement. Uh, they've also got a 280 millimeter radiator and also took care of all my fittings and the fans that are in this case. So when I heard that the modding contest was gonna be Bethesda or id based, uh, I thought about the classics. I thought about going with Doom or something out of the Fallout series or uh, Elder Scrolls or, or something like that. You know, one of their big titles. Uh, I decided to go with Dishonored. Uh, it's one of my favorite games. It's a very unique original gameplay concept uh, and one of my favorite games in quite a long time. Uh, the question is, how do you take a Define R6 and show off Dishonored as a build theme? One of the things I decided on early on getting into this build is I didn't want this to be an advertisement for Dishonored. What I wanted this to be was something that looked like it came out of the world of Dishonored, something that was stylized in the same style as the props and environments of Dishonored. Uh, so I started actually not with like tearing into the case or anything like that. I bought myself a Corvo Otano mask. This gives me a really good representation of the world, the style, the, the steampunk, the, the the little iris in the eye in, in his left eye, the the kind of red leather cover un, under the mask that, that ties everything in, uh, the, the dirty welds in between the, the steel panels here, the, all the use of the copper and the gearing. This very much was the inspiration for at least the, the color direction that I wanted to go. The build itself is actually really based off some concept art from the game that I found online. And this is actually based off of the eye control station. And you can see that very predominantly right here in the front of the case with the, uh, the reservoir there. Uh, the idea behind this build is I wanted the PC to be powered by whale oil. And so I've got my whale oil tank, I've got a power gauge, and before it shipped, that actually moved and jumped around and I had a little LED that kind of flickered. Uh, that stopped working in the move and I have not had a chance to fix that yet, unfortunately. Uh, and then I actually used spark plug wires to route into the power supply shroud to show off maybe this is being powered by this whale oil tank here. I was thrilled when EVGA reached out and offered to sponsor the build because uh, I knew exactly what motherboard I wanted from them right away, and that was their For the Wind board with the, uh, the steel-colored cover on there on the, the back of the rear I.O., as well as that massive steel heatsink aluminum in this case, but that, that brushed metal color. Color-wise, like I said, uh, looking at this mask, I wanted it to be world-used and aged and, and look like it had been through some stuff. So I wanted to go with the silver, but I wanted it to be a, a dull, beat-up silver that, that shows some wear. And uh, this is actually material called Rub and Buff. Uh, and I've, I've known about this for a long time. This is my first time actually using it, though. Um, but basically, it's a wax material, and the more you rub it, the more like metal it becomes. Uh, so I didn't have to prime this case or sand it down or anything like that. Both the top and the front panel, uh, I, I decided to go with the open grill design. And I painted those, uh, again, with rub and buff, but in a copper finish. And I think that turned out absolutely fantastic. Uh, there's a lot of copper in uh, in the world of, of Dishonored, and I think I thought it was a perfect match for the game. So you'll notice the front of the Define R6, there's usually a door. I don't have a door here. 
So I started off by removing the hinges from the door, pulling the door off of the front of the case, and then removing the two hinges that were built into the case. But now I'm left with a couple of holes that are there and, uh, and kind of this just doesn't look great. There's a giant gap between the, the grill up front here and, and the inside of the case that I was gonna have to fill with some kind of material um, and, and try to fabricate the holes that were now exposed from those hinges being missing. Then I had a really brilliant idea that turned into kind of a curse. Uh, the front of the door on the Define R6 is an aluminum panel that's basically laminated onto the front of it. Um, I started picking up at the edge. I realized it was a separate piece. You could remove it. It wasn't just a piece of plastic that was gonna shatter or just some texture. It's actually a piece of aluminum. So I went about taking a heat gun and a numerous amount of prying tools and uh, over the better part of an hour removed that, uh, that front panel from the door. Uh, fractal design, major props here. That glue that you used did not give up without a fight. Once I finally relented, I had to figure out how to put the metal panel onto the front of the case. And then I realized the back of the metal panel was still covered in glue. That was seemingly pressure activated. You push on it and it gets stickier. So I slapped it onto the front of the case and outside of a little bit of super glue to kind of shore up some of the edges that popped up, it worked fantastic and is still holding today. Once that was on, it was time to break out the Dremel to actually cut the, the center panel for the grate out, as well as uh, cut around the IO. This is where the blessing and the curse came in, is it took me almost an hour to get the, the metal panel off that door. Uh, it probably took me a good three to four hours to cut and finish and sand and file and recut and refile and resand to get that edge smooth so you're not gonna cut yourself on it, so it was uniform across all sides. Uh, and then get that, that uh, grate mounted back into there. Uh, it is just pressure fit in there, whereas before it kind of held in with a latch. But right now it's just free floating in there. You can take it right out and just holds in there with friction. Works great. As luck would have it, when I was working on this project, I was killing some time watching Tested.com, Adam Savage. Uh, he was building a replica high altitude survival helmet uh, and he was building it out of styrene and he had to do some, some what looked like dirty welds and he ended up using hot glue and rub and buff. Now, I was already planning on using rub and buff for the color of this case. And when I saw that, uh, that he could use a hot glue gun and make it look like a dirty, uh, poor power weld, I, I knew that was exactly what I wanted to go with here. And quite honestly, I don't think that seam could have turned out any better than it did. Once that front panel was done, it was time to finish the painting on this case. Uh, so the entire outside and most of the inside of this case got coated in the silver rub and buff, uh, finished and aged to a point that I liked it. And then all of the grating on here, so the front grate, top grate, uh, all of the IO plates uh, and some of the accessory hardware got coated in copper. With the outside done, it was time to start focusing on the inside of this case mod. Now the inside of the case mod, the only thing I really modified was this panel right here outside of color. Uh, but getting this look right took quite a bit of planning. Um, I knew I wanted a, a whale oil tank and it had to look like the whale oil was removable from the front. But how do you mount that into the case uh, that's a cylinder in a square hole uh, that you don't want to fall forward when you're installing it? Um, so I had the idea of building this frame out of, again, some square doweling, painting that silver, making it look like it was part of the case, and then fitting the reservoir inside of there. So the reservoir actually sits forward from that panel by probably a good half to three quarter inch. Uh, and it does look like I can reach in there, grab it and pull it out from the rest of the case. Beyond that, it was getting the gauge mounted in there, getting that wired up, which doesn't work anymore, unfortunately, uh, and then getting the spark plug wires ran. I got all of the components installed, got the water blocks on, uh, got the hoses ran and cut, got all my fittings in. Um, I actually didn't get a chance to water test this until I actually got to Texas, so that was a little bit scary. Uh, but luckily we pressure tested it, everything checked out fine, got water in there and everything went, went fine. Uh, but I had one last thing to finish and one thing I haven't talked about yet, and that's the back panel. Uh, figuring out a design for the back panel that would sell this as Dishonored without advertising Dishonored, that was a, a little bit difficult to come up with as well. What I came up with was this. Oh, this thing's heavy. What I came up with was this. Now, my idea behind this was this was an eye control station, so it's, a, it's an electronic station that's sitting next to a guard outpost or something like that. What better place, and something I've seen a lot of if you walk through any major city, 
is random posters that are stuck onto light poles and just wrap around the, those light poles. That's what this is. I started with some of the older posters first as the first layer, so the, the, the Mortimer's hats and the Golden Cat advertisement uh, and, and the Sokolov's elixir, uh, and then started stacking wanted posters on top of that to kind of give a progression of history throughout the game. And then of course, Corvo right at the very top there. And quite honestly, this is my favorite feature of the whole case. I think this turned out fantastic. And that is my QuakeCon Modders Inc. Staff vs. Staff second place case mod. Um, quite honestly, this is the most extensive mod that I've done. Uh, I've, I've cut holes in my cases before and I've done some really crappy paint jobs and whatnot. This was the first time that I truly took my time. Uh, I, I spent probably between 45 and 50 hours in labor in this case, either in planning stages or figuring out different painting methods or actually doing some cuts or water cooling layout or bench testing. Like I said, th this case is probably beginning to end between 40 and 50 hours, somewhere in there. And I could not be more pleased with the results. Um, I, I am over the moon with how this came out, even if the contest was rigged. Thank you guys so much for watching. Uh, let me know down in the comments if you'd like to see some benchmark numbers off of this. I'd be more than happy to run this through a, a slew of tests. Maybe even do some overclock tests on this. I know it's no hashtag uh, rip J or rip gamers nexus, but uh, it could still be fun. Standard ending? Okay, here we go. Make sure to like this video, subscribe to Craft Computing if you haven't done so already. Follow me on Twitter at Craft Computing. Make sure to check out the Patreon down in the video description where a dollar a month can get you access to my exclusive Discord server where you can chat with myself and the other hosts from Talking Heads, my live show that airs every Wednesday at 8 p.m. Pacific for the latest in beer and tech news. And as always, I will see you in the next video. Cheers, guys.